1 Corinthians. For I received from the Lord what I handed out to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread, and after he had given thanks, broke it and said, This is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way also the chalice have the supper saying, This chalice is the new covenant of my blood. Do this in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this chalice, you proclaim the death of the Lord until he comes. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. spirit. Nice to see you all. A special welcome to our visitors and welcome all those watching uh, through the Facebook and YouTube. And the Mass today is being offered for Harold Winters. So as we come to pray for Harold, let us call to mind our sins. Lord Jesus, you raise us to new life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you forgive us our sins. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you feed us with your body and blood. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Be almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us everlasting life. Amen. Please bow your heads and pray in silence for our winters. O oh God, whose eternal word adores the face of the heavens, yet accepted from the Virgin Mary, the frailty of our flesh, grant we pray that he who appeared among us in the splendor of truth may go forth in the fullness of power for the redemption of the world, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the first letter of St. John. Beloved, we receive from him whatever we ask, because we keep his commandments and do what pleases him. And his commandment is this, we should believe in the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and love one another just as he commanded us. Those who keep his commandments remain in him and he in them. And the way we know that he remains in us is from the Spirit whom he gave us. Beloved, do not trust every spirit, but test the spirit to see whether they belong to God, because many false prophets have gone out into the world. This is how we can know the Spirit of God. Every spirit that acknowledges Jesus Christ come in the flesh belongs to God. And every spirit that does not acknowledge Jesus does not belong to God. This is the spirit of the Antichrist who, as you heard, is to come, but in fact is already in the world. You belong to God, children, and you have conquered them. For the one who is in you is greater than the one who is in the world. They belong to the world. Accordingly, their teaching belongs to the world, and the world listens to them. We belong to God, and anyone who knows God listens to us. While anyone who does not belong to God refuses to hear us. This is how we know the spirit of truth and the spirit of deceit. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our responsorial song. I will give you all the nations for an inheritance. I will give you all the nations for an inheritance. The God said to me, you are my son, this day I have begotten you. Ask of me and I will give you the nations for an inheritance and the ends of the earth for your possession. I will give you all the nations for an inheritance. And now, O kings, give heed. 
Take warning, you rulers of the earth. Serve the Lord with fear and rejoicing before him, with trembling rejoice. I will give you all the nations for the inheritance. We thank you. Proclaimed the gospel of the kingdom and cured every disease among the people. Hallelujah! 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 The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, When Jesus heard that John had been arrested, he withdrew to Galilee. He left Nazareth and went to live in Capernaum by the sea in the region of Zebulon and Naphtali. By what had been said through Isaiah the prophet might be fulfilled. Land of Zebulon, land of Naphtali, the way to the sea beyond the Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles. The people who sit in darkness have seen a great light. On those dwelling in a land overshadowed by death, light has arisen. From that time on, Jesus began to preach and say, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. He went around all of Galilee, teaching in their synagogues, proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom and curing every disease and illness among the people. His fame spread to all of Syria, and they brought to him all who were sick with various diseases and racked with pain, those who were possessed, lunatics, paralytics, and he cured them. And great crowds from Galilee, the Decapolis, Jerusalem, and Judea, and from beyond the Jordan followed him. Gospel of the Lord. Good morning, my brothers and sisters in Christ. Good Happy New Year. Happy also, Merry Christmas, as our Christmas season doesn't conclude until the feast of the baptism of Jesus, which is January 9th this year. So keep those lights in this tree up until Sunday and celebrate. As is sometimes the case, our daily gospel readings can be out of sync with the church calendar. And today we have that situation. Our gospel from St. Matthew is the beginning of Jesus' Galilean ministry. And to give us some context, prior to this in Matthew, we would have read the genealogy of Jesus, his birth, the visit of the Magi, Joseph bringing his family to Egypt, the death of the holy innocents, the return from Egypt. John the Baptist preaching and baptizing Jesus, and Jesus' time in the desert and his temptation there. Matthew gives us all of this as a prelude to the start of Jesus' public ministry. He begins his ministry in Galilee. Why Galilee? Well, if you think about it, Jerusalem, the capital of Israel, and Judea is in the south. That is the southern territory known as Judea. Galilee is in the northern part of the Holy Land. That's where Nazareth is. That's where Jesus grew up. And John the Baptist is doing his ministry in the south, in Judea. And that is where he is arrested and ultimately executed and put to death by Herod. Jesus goes from the south in Judea and up to Galilee. It says he withdraws into Galilee. Judea is now dangerous. John has been arrested and will be beheaded as a prophet. And Jesus, if he was to begin his ministry there, would face some of the similar dangers from the king and the authorities. But practically speaking, it's a very wise decision to get out of Judea, which is a hotbed of this kind of political turmoil, and move into a safer, quieter region in the north of Galilee. But... That is not why Matthew says Jesus goes up into the land of Galilee. Matthew says that Jesus does it in order to fulfill a prophecy. 
that he goes to Capernaum, to the land of Zebulun and Naphtali, so that the words of the prophet Isaiah might be fulfilled. And then he gives you the quote from Isaiah that we read. Now for many of us Christians reading in the 21st century, that prophecy doesn't have much meaning. But for a first century Jew, this would have been absolutely critical due to their history. See, the Assyrian exile of the 10 northern tribes, the lost tribes of Israel, where did it begin? It began in the territories of Zebulon and Naphtali. It began in Galilee. According to the book of Kings, 2 Kings 15 through 17, it says that the first tribes to go in to exile was Zebulon and Naphtali. Jesus is going to begin gathering around himself the 12 disciples in order to build a new Jerusalem, a new Israel, precisely where the old Israel was devastated and scattered to the four winds. Listen to the words of the prophecy again. Land of Zebulon, land of Naphtali, toward the sea across the Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles. The people who sat in darkness have seen a great light. And those who sat in the region in shadow of death, light has dawned. My brothers and sisters, that light that dawned in Galilee almost 2,000 years ago is the light of the world that we still see today. The light of Jesus Christ. The words he preached then are just as true today. Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. As we begin another trip around the sun, rejoice that the light of Christ, the Son of God, is with us as we journey on our pilgrimage here on earth. Let us pray for Carl Winters, for Pat Ladner, for the Niners, for um, Kathy Norton, for Ralph Baldwin, for all those who have asked for special prayers during this difficult time. We present our needs in faith. We pray for the intercession of St. Joseph, hope of the sick, patron of the dying, protector of the Holy Church, to guard us in these times of turmoil. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord yeah. For Pope Francis, that he guide the church with wisdom and humility. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord that all bishops, priests, and deacons have the courage to speak the truth in these difficult times. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord For the quad process, that it builds the church by building disciples. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord that those suffering illness will link their suffering to the redemptive suffering of Jesus Christ the salvation of the world. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. And for all the prayers that we hold in the silence of our hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. Almighty God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this beautiful time of the year where we celebrate Jesus with us. We lift up in prayer all our sick, all the faithful departed, all those who have requested prayer for special intentions, as we pray in faith through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for to your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Through the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. <clears throat> Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May, may the Lord accept sacrifice to your hands for the praise and glory of his name. 
Receive our oblation, O Lord, by which you brought about the glorious exchange, that by offering what you have given, we may merit to receive your very Son through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For on the feast of this awful mystery, though invisible in his own divine nature, he has appeared visible in ours, and begotten before all ages, he's begun to exist in time, so that raising up in himself all who are cast down, he might restore unity to all creation and call strain humanity back to the heavenly kingdom. And so with all the angels we praise him, as in joyful celebration we acclaim. O holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in my eyes. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Today I've got a poem from Padre Pio. Pius the Ninth, our Padre Pio. He said, Always remain close to the Catholic Church because it alone can give you true peace, since it alone possesses Jesus in the Blessed Sacrament, the true Prince of Peace. You're indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy therefore these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and gave him thanks broken, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. My Lord and my God. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. My Lord and my God. The Mystery of Faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partake of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church bread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, Louis our Bishop, and all of your people. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the blessed Joseph, our spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. 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 At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and take all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and for our Lord 
Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant your peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy, since you can enter under my own. I don't miss to say the word in my soul. May the body and blood of Christ keep us safe from each other. Amen. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Grant we pray, Almighty God, that by the power of these holy mysteries, our life may be constantly sustained through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for Ashley. Good morning. Our reading today of John speaks in two different parts. In our first part, we're told that God will always be there for us, listening to our prayers. And how do we know that? Because we do what pleases God and we keep the commandments. And what are the commandments? The cornerstones of the faith are to keep the commandments and to believe in the name of Jesus Christ and treat one another as we would want to be treated, to love one another. Then we have our second part, which speaks of the Antichrist and the evil in the world. Now, not that I know that there is evil in the world and there is darkness that goes against the Christian faith and, and Jesus himself. But the second part started to make me question, what about those who simply don't know any better? What about those who were maybe manipulated, deceived, or lied to as a child and they've gone about life just not knowing who Jesus is or what it means to love one another because they weren't shown love? when they were younger. So that brings me to my challenge for you this week. My challenge is to just take the time for somebody who may have that, that grit or that, that bit of something missing in their life and just listen. I know coming from someone who's spent a lot of their life in darkness and, and dancing with darkness, my thing was my, my grandmother that I speak of. And, and I was blessed to come from a family who, who knows Christianity and who knows Jesus. And I just remember that whenever my grandmother would listen to me, it would make everything in the world seem to disappear. And it helped me come to know Jesus. So just take the time this week and, and listen to somebody who may seem lost. Because sometimes just lending an ear will be all the difference to change their world. Thank you. Very good, Ashley. Your grandmother was a great lady. And I have to confess, sometimes I don't get the Mississippi humor, but my friends tell me this is a good joke, so let me try it. <laughs> a woman went to the meat counter in her local market and asked the butcher for an oxtail. The butcher said, Certainly, ma'am, once upon a time there was an ox. <laughs> Still don't have it. The Lord be with you. And with you. And may Almighty God bless you. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.
Amen. Masters, and you go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray the prayer to the Holy Spirit. Come, Holy, Holy Spirit, in the hearts of your faithful, and take the lust of fire and your love. Sing forth your spirit, and we shall be created, and you shall renew the face of the earth. Let us pray, O God, that by the light of the Holy Spirit, instruct our hearts of the faithful, grant by the same Holy Spirit, we may be truly wise, and ever rejoice in this consolation. Through Christ our Lord. Amen.